Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In today's video, we're gonna finally fill up that empty 100 gallon system upstairs with some sand and start our aquascape. The rock that I'm using is uh, twofold. It's real reef rock, which is this purple stuff here. It's man-made, never been in the ocean. Um, I have been uh, curing this for several months inside this container. And underneath the real reef rock, I can't reach it right now, but it's a uh, reef saver rock that I took out of my 75 gallon system. The Reef Saver Rock, I actually did do a bleaching on that. I did a video, the link to that video will be down below in the description. In addition to the live rock, I also have Marine Pure blocks here to collect beneficial bacteria for the uh, upcoming cycle. I did pour some pods in here and I've been feeding them uh, phytoplankton every so often. This water is salt water. It's been like this for six months. Uh, the top of the water is being circulated by this MP10 that is going to go into my nano tank. There's a larger pump down below circulating water down there. This water is also heated. I think I have it to about 76 degrees or so. And so it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it upstairs, lay out all the rock on my balcony upstairs to see what kind of shapes I have, and then start figuring out what kind of scape I'm going to go with. I've laid out all the rock on my deck. I'm guessing I have a little bit over 100 pounds of rock here. The majority of the rock was from my previous 75 gallon build. The Reef Saver rock is the one that is bleach white and the real reef rock is the purple stuff. I also have a few pieces of shelving here I'm hoping to utilize in this build. I also have a large bag of rubble rock. The rubble rock comes in handy to fill in any gaps in the structure to give it more of a natural look. The reality is these rocks are going to be hidden once the corals are grown out two or three years from now. The rock isn't going to be seen, but the rock structure does serve a very important function, which I'll go over later in this video. These are the tools I was planning on using for this project. I was recently on Rico's Reef Tanks live stream and asked about drilling into Reef Saver Rock. A couple of people on the live stream said they've tried to do this with no success without going out and buying the right drill bit and right hand drill. As you can see, I'm having no success trying to drill the Reef Saver Rock. In fact, the drill bit started to smoke and I was making no progress. I actually had the same results trying to drill the real Reef Rock. The downside of these rocks are they're just too dense to drill, but the upside is that they are easy to stack. Since I won't be able to hold my rock structure using rods, I moved on to Plan B. 915 Mang suggested I use this Aquamax Reef Welder Plastic Epoxy Glue. These are small white and purple pellets that will bond together when submerged into hot water. I tried to use hot water from the tap, but it just didn't work. The water wasn't hot enough. I used this electric kettle to bring the water to a boil. I then poured a small amount of the pellets into this glass container. I wanted to make sure that I was going to have something to hold the rock structure together before I started stacking it. I poured in the hot water and waited about two minutes. The white pellets turned clear and it was ready to needle. I sacrificed the first layers of my skin by reaching into the boiling water and removing a small amount of epoxy. After needling a small amount, the epoxy turned purple and was ready to be used. Now that I knew I had glue that was going to hold my ruck structure, it was time to move on to the next step. I'm using this Carib Sea Fiji Pink Sand. The grain sizes vary from 0.5 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters. I have a total of 5 20 pound uh, bags of this sand. My goal is to have a 1.5 to 2 inch sand bed. You can start your scape, then add the sand, or you can add the sand and then start your scape. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I personally prefer to lay down the sand first. It provides a small safety cushion in the event a rock slips or rolls off. The sand will be there to provide some protection of a rock cracking the bottom of the glass. It also stabilizes the bottom rocks at the start of the scape. Each one of these sandbags contain a small bag of clarifier you can add into the tank after the water is introduced to help expedite removing the cloudy water. After about the fourth bag, I started to notice that I might have too much sand in the tank. After taking measurements to confirm the sand bed was too deep, I took a dustpan and started removing the sand until I had it just right. Unfortunately, I ended up wasting about a half a bag of sand, so if you're looking for a low sand bed, make sure you do your measurements of the sand bed more frequently to avoid wasting sand. I spent hours looking at pictures of different aquascapes. Let me tell you guys, there are some really talented and creative people out there. After looking at hundreds of scapes, I decided to go with a two island scape with a valley or canyon look in between the two islands. 
I also knew I wanted the tops of the scape on both islands to have a gradual slope down toward the sand bed to give the corals that would eventually grow out a three dimensional look. My other goals was to have plenty of negative space for the fish to swim and for better water flow. Unlike my 75 gallon system, I didn't want the scape to rest on the back of the glass. Okay, so now I was ready to start placing the first rocks into the display. I took my larger rocks and set those down first as a foundation for the rest of the rocks that would build upwards. Initially, no matter what I did, I just couldn't get the right look. I must have torn down my scape four or five times. There was a point where I just started thinking my vision of what I wanted wasn't going to work. Discouragement and frustration surely started to set in. I took several breaks and went back to the picture that inspired the scape in the first place. The rock sizes and shapes wasn't cutting it. I took to the chisel and started to chisel some of the rocks to break them up. After I did this, things started to move forward. I started to see the scape take shape. I was on the right path and I had the right size rocks stacking up nicely now. I was confident it was turning out and I started using the epoxy to secure the rocks into place. There were dozens of small to medium sized caves within the rock work. The valley I had envisioned was staring right back at me in my face. I had plenty of space between all sides of the rock structure and the glass. Both islands were aligned with the radion lights and I didn't see any obvious dead spots for the maxi spec gyre 230 pumps. I stopped working on the scape and just stared at it. The longer I stared, the more I thought something was wrong. I wasn't thrilled with the island on the right side. The front of it just looked too cliffy. I started to play around with a few more rocks and it started to come together. The right island started to show signs of depth just by simply adding more rocks to give it more of a gradual slope. In the end, this is what I ended up with. A two island sort of canyon look with a gradual downhill slope. I have plenty of real estate in the sand for a couple of clams, plenty of negative space for fish and flow, hiding spaces and caves for the more skittish fish, and lots of clearance between the rock structures and all sides of the glass. This tank is finally ready for some salt water. As excited as I am about the scape, I want to hear your thoughts on it. If you have any suggestions, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. If you have any tips for viewers who are in the process of scaping their tanks, drop a comment. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel and follow along with this build along with my 20 gallon nano build. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys next Sunday.